Good morning, all. Today, we are going to uh, be covering the material for Chapter 2, Lesson 4. This material is probably one of the best skills you're going to learn in fifth grade because you're going to use it all the time. It makes things so much easier and it's a lot less work. What we want to do here is learn how to work smart, not always work hard. And this is one of the best skills you're going to learn in fifth grade. It's called, I call it, the tens trick. Your book calls it multiplication patterns or something like that. That's boring. So the tens trick allows you to multiply and divide, but today we're only going to deal with multiplying. Uh, numbers that have multiples of 10 without actually doing the whole algorithm or lattice method or whatever you use. This will allow you to calculate uh, mentally. So um, a lot less work, very, very fast. I have extensive notes for you on this method, so you don't have to take notes. All you have to do is listen and try and understand. Jot down any questions you may have um, so that you can email them to me later or you can bring them up in class and we'll discuss them. So when you have a multiplication question, the first thing you should look at real quick is do I have multiples of 10 as my factors? And what a multiple of 10 means is the factor has zeros at the end. So for example, I have a number of examples here. We're gonna deal with the first one, 800 times three. So the easy way to do this is use the tens trick. First step is find the math fact in this question. And the math fact here is eight times three. So we write down the math fact. I like to underline the math fact, eight times three, which is 24. Write your answer, just like that. The next thing you do is count the number of zeros you have in both the factors. So I have two zeros here and one zero here for a total of three zeros and I put my three zeros after my product of my basic fact. So three zeros, add a comma if your number is large enough, which it is, and that is my product. That's it. Really, it's that simple. Huh. Let's try another one. How about this one? 124 times 100. Math fact here, one times 124. 124, underline that. How many zeros do I have? I have two zeros, so I put two zeros after my 124, add in my comma if I need it, and I have my product. So no more are we gonna see this nonsense. This is using the standard algorithm with all these ridiculous zeros right here. I don't need to see that. That tells me, mm, I didn't check that this was a tens trick question and that I could do it quick and dirty. Instead, I'm just gonna be like a robot, like a calculator and do the same thing every time. Mm -mm. Use your brain, you're a thinking human being. Sometimes you don't have to do all this difficult work. Instead, you could just do it in your head with the tens trick. <laughs> Sometimes, you will have numbers that are multiplied by exponents. We did this last time. Exponents, they're even easier. How can they be easier? They are. Same steps, find your math fact and underline it. In this case, one times 87, which is 87. But now, because it's an exponent, instead of having to count the number of zeros, you just look at the exponent and it tells you how many zeros. Look, exponent is two, that means two zeros. You're done, you're done. That, my friends, is the tens trick. Later, in other lessons, we'll be learning how to use the tens trick with division. We'll learn how to use the tens trick with decimals. It's fantastic. So please practice that skill, you will use it a lot. So today's assignment is a two-pager. Uh, um, volume one of the My Math book, page 101 and 102. Page 102 has some word problems on it. I'd like to discuss for a second how to answer a word problem properly. A word problem is presented to you in words. Your answer needs to be presented in words. So what I do is I use Mrs. Malachewski's race method. Don't tell her, but you use it in science. 
You use it in social studies, you use it in math, you use it all over the place. It's a great method. So you find the question, and let's use question number 13 on page 102 as an example. So we find the question, and the question here is, how many pencils does the school store have? So restate that question. The school store has blank pencils. Then you use your math skills to find the answer and you plug it into the sentence. There it is, you're done. It's easy. And the great thing about that is you don't have to remember units. In this question, the units are pencils. That's what you're trying to find out, right? The number of pencils. So if you just put 17, 17 what? Hot dogs, elephants, what? Pencils. When you state your answer in a sentence, you don't have to remember, what were my units again? It's already there in the sentence. And a lot of times, what I like to do is before I even do the math, I read through the question, all the information, find the question. Usually you can tell because there's a question mark. Make up my sentence, write it down. I don't have the answer yet. So what I do is I write a blank. They have, or the school store has, blank pencils. Now my sentence is all ready. Now all I have to do is do my math, plug my answer in to my sentence, and I'm done. So that's a tip for answering all word problems in fifth grade and sixth grade and high school and college, etc. Always answer word problems or story problems with a sentence using the race method and you will, you will go far. Okay, so that is our lesson for today. Again, if you have any questions that I have not answered, email them to me or bring them to school and we will discuss. Thank you. Bye now.